Shout out to the new show Condor for sponsoring this update. Condor airs Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on the Audience Network, available via DirecTV and DirecTV Now. Watch the first episode free, no login required on att.net slash condor right now. Condor, truth is the first victim. Oh, man. Welcome to The No. I'm Brian. It's Friday. We've got a ton of news, so let's get to it. Are we coming to the end of consoles? That's what the head of Ubisoft thinks, saying that he thinks consoles have one generation left and that we'll all be streaming games from the cloud. Ubisoft CEO Yves Guimot told Variety, I think we will see another generation, but there is a good chance that step by step, we will see less and less hardware. With time, I think streaming will become more accessible to many players and make it not necessary to have big hardware at home. He added there will be one more console generation, then after that, we will be streaming, all of us. Now, all right, it's worth noting that these kind of predictions have been made before and consoles are still around. Uh, it, you would need a great internet connection to do this, but hey, in another 10 to 12 years, given the advances in technology, who knows? I'm still keeping my Dreamcast, though you will never get that from me. We've got another leak coming in before E3, and this time it's Just Cause 4. The game, which hasn't been officially announced, popped up on a Steam window that users saw when they launched the app. So, oops, it didn't give a release date or anything, just some art and the name of the game, and then some text below said pre-order now. So obviously, somebody at Steam jumped the guns. We'll see if Square Enix says anything. Interestingly though, this is yet another confirmation of that Walmart Canada leak, which so far has confirmed other games like Lego DC Villains, Rage 2, and the new Assassin's Creed game. So that leak was a lot more correct than we gave it credit for at the time. Speaking of Just Cause, its developer Avalanche Studios is really busy these days because it also just announced a new co-op shooter. The game is called Generation Zero and it's set in an alternate universe. Specifically, it's in 1980 Sweden and you're fighting against an invasion of machines in the countryside. You'll be able to play solo or with friends for some four player co-op and it's being developed for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. No word yet on a release date, but we will keep you posted. Oh, and we've got even more new game news. I love this time of year. The developer of Arma and DayZ has announced that it's working on an Xbox One exclusive. The developer, Bohemia Interactive, has been teasing this game in a series of tweets. The most interesting one had a date at the bottom. It looks like it was scratched in with a knife. It says June 11th. That's when we will presumably learn more. That image also has a newspaper whose headline reads, Adam Bomb Hit Europe. And nearby there's a knife, there's some shotgun shells, a pistol. It's about all we got to go on right now, but looks like we'll know more really soon. Speaking of new game announcement, we're not just done yet. We got more. Koei Tecmo has announced that Dead or Alive 6 is now in development. IGN broke that news with a reveal trailer of the latest installment of the legendary fighting series. It shows off six playable characters, including Ryu Hayabusa, Jan Lee, and Zack. New characters will also be introduced. IGN also says that Team Ninja will tone down the sexualized approach to female fighters that the series is known for, and apparently characters will have less revealing clothing, which... <sighs> All right, I guess. Also, interestingly, characters will sustain visible wounds, like cuts and bruises, and there'll be new attack mechanics introduced. All kinds of new things. We'll learn more about the game also on June 11th at E3. It's official, guys. Crackdown 3. It's been delayed. It ain't happening this year. Sorry, Microsoft confirmed what we've been hearing for a while, not coming out in 2018. In a statement to Windows Central, Microsoft said that the game has now been bumped to February of 2019. Microsoft said, our fans' response to the signature antics and explosive gameplay of Crackdown 3 has been incredible. To ensure we deliver the experience they deserve, Crackdown 3 will be launching in February 2019. We look forward to sharing more on Crackdown 3 this Sunday during the Xbox E3 2018 briefing. 
Also, Windows Central, citing some sources, said that the game is, quote, coming along nicely, and Microsoft is eager to elevate Crackdown as a franchise to sit alongside the likes of Halo, Gears of War, and Forza. Okay, but it can't be coming along that nicely. It's been delayed like a million times. But you know what? Hopefully for us Xbox owners, they get it right. If, if, if they do that, I will forgive all the delays. Speaking of new game, one more new game. Sony has announced another one as part of its E3 countdown. This time it's a story-driven adventure game called Twin Mirror, developed by Don't Nod and published by Bandai Namco. In a reveal trailer, we see the lead character, Sam, waking up in a shirt covered in blood, and he doesn't have any memory of what happened. Holy shit, that's... That's scary. On the PlayStation blog, a Bandai Namco employee described the game by writing, Twin Mirror is a psychological thriller wrapped around an investigation where your memories, choices, and relationships will determine Sam's complicated fate. As he comes to term with heartbreak, homecoming, and the perpetual struggle of adulthood, Sam will need your help exploring a dark and emotional adventure where the line between truth and deception is blurred. Sam sounds like he's going through a lot, you guys. It's scheduled to come out next year for the PlayStation 4. All right, let's get into some movie news. The trailer for the new Halloween movie just dropped online and it is a doozy. This is a unique legacy sequel in that it brings back the original star, Jamie Lee Curtis, one more time, but chooses to ignore every single movie in the franchise except for that first one. And that even includes the sequels that Jamie Lee Curtis herself was in, like Halloween 2, H2O, and Resurrection. Probably for the best though, because things got real weird as those films went on. They revealed that Michael and Lori were brother and sister, and they tried to explain away Michael Myers as the result of some cult that worshiped runes. So maybe we're going for a fresh start here. The new movie ignores all that and is a direct sequel to the original film. So the emphasis in the trailer is back on the small town horror that began the slasher movie craze in the late 70s and 80s. Michael Myers looks scary again. It looks cool. The film opens, of course, this Halloween. A legendary actor just signed up to appear in Quentin Tarantino's next movie, and it's none other than Al Pacino, star of movies like The Godfather, Dog Day Afternoon, and of course, Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler, another classic. Uh, he has joined the cast of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is Tarantino's sprawling epic that's set in LA in the late 60s. The movie already has a banging cast, including Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kurt Russell, Burt Reynolds, Margot Robbie, just to name a few. DiCaprio plays an aging actor who happens to live next door to Manson family victim Sharon Tate, and Pacino will be playing DiCaprio's agent. Quentin Tarantino promises this movie will showcase a tapestry of quirky characters, much like Pulp Fiction, so we're probably not done hearing about cool actors joining up. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson's gotta be right around the corner. Over a decade ago, New Line tried to make Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials into the next Lord of the Rings series, and they blew it. The Golden Compass flopped, and as a result, we never got to see the rest of the story set up in that movie. But never fear, because the BBC is launching its own adaptation. It'll be an eight-part miniseries that will star James McAvoy, Clark Peters, Lin-Manuel Miranda, and Logan's Daphne Keene. For all of us stuck here in North America, though, don't worry we'll be able to watch it too. Deadline says that both Apple and Netflix are interested in picking up North American distribution rights. This is the story of a parallel universe skipping orphan with her own armored polar bear. Didn't really work as a feature film series, but you know what? Should be great as a long form mini series. All right, that is all the news we've got for today. Let us know what you think about all these stories down in the comments below. Oh, and we're gonna be back for E3. Ashley and them are gonna be in LA, but me and Caden are gonna be right here in Austin. We're gonna do daily uh, roundups about what happened at E3 every day, but you should also watch the live stream. So keep it tuned right here. Like this video, subscribe to the note. We will hook you up for E3, I promise. Shout out to the new show Condor for sponsoring this update. Hey, when you created the system that turns against you, who can you trust? Well, on Audience Network's new show Condor, the only survivor of an attack against the CIA is forced to go on the run, facing moral dilemmas under life or death 
pressure? Who's behind this conspiracy? And can he stop them from threatening the lives of millions of people? Holy shit. Based on the cult classic Robert Redford film, Six Days of the Condor, this new series stars Max Irons, William Hurt, Liam Lubini, Mira Sorvino, Brendan Fraser, and Bob Balaban. Condor airs Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on the Audience Network. It's available via DirecTV and DirecTV Now. Watch the first episode for free. No login required. Go to att.net slash condor right now. Condor. Truth is the first victim.